work unless someone has a particular fondness for one of their dreams and go into a curious issue. Right? Okay. Okay. Before I begin, uh, one of our new members in the Noetic Society, Adina, is here and she would like to see if there is any housing available for her. If you have an extra room, maybe for a month, please come over and say hello and let her know that there is such a space open. So during the break, rush over and sign up if you have it. Okay, let me ask you a question. Um, it, it may be worthwhile looking at the Phaedo. Why? Because that's where he talks about the separation of the soul from the body. Right? And and he describes it in such a way that you can see it's a process, it's a practice. And as a consequence of this practice, the separation of the soul from the body, and then it experiences the realm of the divine, or the intelligible divine. Now, it's important to get an insight into what it is that is experienced. Well, we all know this is that section that goes from 60, 66 to 69 and the Phaedo. It uses the word wisdom. Like in that struggle to separate the soul from the body, one encounters this divine intelligence and he's giving it the name wisdom. Now, I suspect there's something more going on and uh, it's worth taking another look at it. So, therefore, a couple of sheets. One. Thank you, sir. Two. Barbara. Of the field. You may have your own Fado, but. Oh, I'll take it. I don't have the Greek with me. That's okay. Good. 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 Pleasure. Thank 
you. So take a few minutes out and look at it yourself. Um, it picks up on page 229. called the shortcut. Then said he, all this must cause good lovers of wisdom to think and say one of the other something like this. There seems to be a shortcut. Got it? So continue there into the next page.
For if pure knowledge is impossible <clears throat> while the body is with us, one of two things must follow. Either it can't be acquired at all, or only when we're dead. For then the soul will be by itself, apart from the body, but not before. Damn. So, um, unless God sets you free. So therefore, he comes down on page 233 in the paragraph And does not the purification consist, got that paragraph? Is that a process? Is that a yoga? Can you visualize every step? Now, while you were reading, I did some doodling. And this probably either has or doesn't have anything to do with where we're going. So, if you don't want to pay any attention to it, it probably shows you're wise or foolish. But I don't know which. So let's look at the process. Does not purification consist in this? <clears throat> hey, he's talked about this for a long time with his group. In which has been mentioned long ago in our discourse. Right. 
the subject he's gone over many times. In separating as far as possible the soul from the body and teaching the soul the habit of collecting and bringing itself together from all parts of the body and living so far as it can both now and hereafter alone by itself freed from the body as from fetters. Right? So look. All right. It looks like, therefore, that his idea of the soul is pervasive around the body. And you have to gather it together from all parts of the body. And that's a practice, right? Pulling together from all parts of the body. So that then, what's interesting about this quote, and collecting and bringing itself together from all parts of the body and living as far as it can both now and hereafter. Both now and the hereafter, this is a separation. That's dying, he says, and that's the goal of the philosopher. Agree? True philosophers, and they alone, are always most eager to release the soul. Just this, the release and separation of the soul from the body. Is this their study? Yes or no? In fact, summary. The true philosophers practice dying, the process, and death is less terrible to them than to any other men. Right. So just go down and finish that paragraph for me for a few minutes. And he who really has a love of wisdom, what happens to him given this process?
This river going. Is there a conscious effort in European intellectual tradition to dummy down Plato? Is our whole culture faced with translations that all over the place dummy down what? The metaphysical side of Platonic thought. Is this tendency pervasive? Or is it too difficult for most translators and therefore <clears throat> they have no alternative but to simplify it and forget whatever is there to be seen? Right. So that's a background. And this quote, I think, will help us get an insight because this is connected with this. And we want to see it. So let me get all of you to take a look at one sentence and let's see if we can ask people who have a little Greek in their background. If they had a choice to translate it in a different literal way, how would it go? <clears throat> Here it is. And shall he who is really in love with wisdom and has a firm belief that he can find it nowhere else than in the other world grieve when he dies and not be glad to go there? That's all. Is there anything missing? I see Juan Balboa nodding his head and smiling. He may be seeing something, probably strange. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed that somebody had already uh, underlined the ten out ten out ten. Yeah, that's true. And uh, some, that's something that we have been talking about uh, for a couple of days already. Um, the same, the same phrase is found in Parmenides. That's true. And uh, so why? And I, I don't see that the guy translated it. He put in something else. Well, we well, put something else in there, and, and that is yeah. not there. <clears throat> so what should be in there? Um, this herself. Yeah. Almost to the bottom. Mm-hmm. said earlier, Pierre, about um, whether Platonism has been dummied down. I remember when I first uh, started reading uh, Plato, I remember opening, uh, reading the introduction into the great dialogues of Plato, uh, um, what was it, the collected dialogues of Plato by Huntington Cairns and, and this other lady who's real, real famous in, in, the, in, in the Platonic world in the literary world. Mm -hmm. And she said that there was no such thing as, as mysticism as far as Platonism was concerned, that there's no such thing as mysticism. And 
<laughs> Even then, it this, struck me after wrong. After you read this, right, there's no such thing as mysticism in Plato. Right. <laughs> And, uh, that's a long this book history. is something, every, something that everybody has. You know, everybody has a copy of that book. Well, yeah. what do you make of it? Then? Well, it seems to me, um, I have this question: How could you translate this section and not want to do it? That's true. Which means that it, it's possible to go through this whole process and ignore it. Which sort of adds to your point about yeah. culture, Western culture may have tried to, thanks to Juan's yeah. contribution, dumb it down a little. Yeah. How, would you, how could you want, not want to do that? Yeah, that's there too. Barbara? Oh, I want to take a little while longer with that. <clears throat> In the belief that he can find it, what's the it? What's the it? That's the question. What's the it? Could be. Could be. How about the truth? If could it be the truth? Could be. Uh, is that Greek phrase you're talking about? Is that the it? Where they would have translated. So yeah, I think that it is, would be it. Well, what would that mean if the it is the self? Uh, have you done any work with this, Regina? Uh, yeah, I, I I looked it up. Oh, you did. <laughs> well, what did you find? These quotes. What? These quotes. I know that. <laughs> what did you make of it? Well. Good beginning. My, my superficial grief. Uh, no, they forget mis- it. No, no. Wait a no. minute. No, no, no. They didn't translate. No, wait a minute. No, no. That's not fair. Well, in the Parmenides. Would you agree it's not fair? No. To call your view <laughs> superficial to begin with? Yeah, compared to Greek people, yeah. But uh, but since we've been talking about it in the Parmenides, and this particular quote is uh, related to uh, doubt, the doubt, s- significant doubt that Parmen- uh, that Socrates has about um, Well, it, it's translated as uh, the ideas themselves, or herself, the ideas. Uh, if you stick in the word self then, what is he saying? Well, he's, he, he's relating uh, wisdom with self, is how I thought, is the possible way of seeing that. And if that's the case, then if you're going to gain wisdom, you're going to gain wisdom of the self. In other words, you're going to know yourself, and that's the goal. And that's what he's setting out, and that's why you would want to separate yourself that's, from your body. That's close, but, okay. but now get in the quote. All right. Okay. He has a firm belief that he can find the self nowhere else. Then in the other world. Then in the other world. Wait a minute. What's he doing here? Is he saying, with this separation of the soul, you gain 
What do you gain? We gain several things. Yeah. Truth. Truth. Yeah, more than that quote. See, if the it is the idea of the self, then you have to tell me what point he's making. You're going to, you're going to, hey, if you have a belief, what's the belief? That you're not going to be able to find it anywhere else but upon your death. Is that right? And this is death. Therefore, what is he encountering? The, soul. the nature of the soul. The soul. Woo! Wait a minute. And that experience is also called? Wisdom. Wisdom. Is that correct? Hey, if that's the case, if you can see that in the Greek, if you look for what the heck the word it means, and if it comes out to be this, then what is Plato talking about? How important is the idea of the self? <laughs> You would risk an opinion with that? Well, he says, uh, to be nearest to knowledge when we avoid so far as possible intercourse and communion with the body, except what is absolutely necessary and are not filled with its nature, but keep ourselves pure from it until God himself sets us free. Uh, as closest to the vine as you can get. Yeah, but that's not dealing with this oh, issue. Okay. sorry. Right? That's a prelude to going further. So what is he doing? Oh, I'm just trying to work out a translation of the whole section, and it's driving me crazy. So yeah. some, somebody's got one that includes yeah. the lines. Well, let's see what we can do. He does say, if he is really a philosopher, or he will confidently believe that he will find pure wisdom, that is the self, uh, nowhere else than in the other world, or by separating yourself fully from your body. And yeah. is, this is so, yeah, I get that. But would it not curious. be very, okay. See, you started out very nicely. You made a nice point, right? Okay. But it's buried. You are using the word self, aren't you? Right. Thank you. If he is really a philosopher, for he will confidently believe that he will find self nowhere else than in the other world. Right. Separating that's, himself from your body. That's right. If that's that, if that's going on, hey, if that can be justified, why isn't it translated? So we stay a while with this for a moment, because I got another one. Actually, there are several. But I was lucky enough to get an email from our colleagues, and the same problem comes up again and again. Yeah. Yes. I did a quick translation of that, of that sentence. Please. Yeah. Um, but if anyone is truly a lover of mindfulness and firmly grasps this herself. Firmly grasps this herself. Herself. Mindfulness? Therefore, Amazing. the knowledge yeah, the knowledge of the self is central to Platonic thought. Why is it feminine though? Pardon? I'm wondering why it's feminine, herself. Oh, that's good.
How did he get one? <laughs> Sir? How did you get one? Ask your neighbor, you don't have to be stuck. It's always been. He said it's always been. I'm glad to hear it's always been, but how did you get it? Okay, I just thought I'd ask. Miss? I don't know. <laughs> Look here. Is the idea of self, apart from the fact that it, it's many clear cases where it's used in the feminine, uh, is the self Is the self, or does the self have a generative quality? Or generative power? Or is it sterile? I mean, are there a lot of living things that have self, or only some things? If it has a generative quality, then it's feminine. If it's capable of unfolding, it's feminine. And if you want to make that point, if that's a subtle ongoing point when the her is being used with self, then it's appropriate. Well, and for him, wisdom, come on. Wisdom and two other words are inseparable. Wisdom, pure beauty. That awakens a very profound and everlasting love. One, two, three. He's adding a fourth. like uh, attributing uh, I don't know attributing masculine or feminine to the self well, it seems beyond uh, yes you're now asking a very important question what is the range of uses of the idea of the self. Let's list them all and see whether they're only grammatical distinctions or whether in fact you can find different uses of the very idea of soul. Now, sir. I was just thinking that uh, concerning the self and the one, that one would dare not say that the one is sterile even though it, it's not this and it's not that and it's not this, one would dare not conclude that it's sterile, just as one would not dare conclude that, that uh, the self is sterile. Yeah. Yeah, it would be, 
terrible yeah. to say that. Yeah, it's more. Keep so going. hence, uh, attributed it to it, um, um, the ability to self-perpetuate itself eternally. Yes, uh, self-perpetuate itself over a multiplicity. Yes, indeed. Not a bad thing, yet when you try and look at it in itself, you don't see nothing. I mean, it's the purity of it, it's still say that just like the one, it's pure. So it looks like if we talk about the way it may function, that's different than what it is in itself. Because function is different than what it is, what a thing thing is in itself. Now, I think you have a, enough of a thrill a moment. Let me introduce something else. <clears throat> I got an email from the Balboas. You all know the Balboas? <laughs> right on time, and I thought I'd read it to you. But first, Barbara always has a very nice insight into a curious word, Saprasuna. Can I call on you? I, I suppose. Um, Sophocene is the excellence that has to do with having a sound, which is sos, fro, friend, right? And sune is the word that makes it into a noun. And the word friend is the, also becomes phronesis, as in this quote. And um, it has to do with that part of the body called the diaphragm. So we've often made connections with um, chi, ki, chi, met martial arts term. And so, so sometimes we translate it cool headedness because it means that kind of centeredness that, um, that allows one to function mm-hmm. appropriately in any given situation. How's that? Do you remember your reference to uh, Greek shipbuilding? Sure. That term. Okay. Mm, that term has to do with. The, um, they talk about a harmony in uh, in the virtues, particularly in Sophrosune, binding the high, the middle, the low into a unity. And the, the um, image that's used is a kind of harmozo, is the joining of the ribs of a ship to a kind of a spine that enables right. it to have a certain shape. Right. So if you consider that that spine, wooden spine with its, with its uh, pieces, could be put horizontally, vertically, then you have um, an architecture that very much resembles um, the bodily posture, a spine, mm-hmm. and, and so. And that applies to the mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because sound friend. Yeah, sound mindfulness. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, dear Pierre, I just fell across the most beautiful statement in the Charmides. One, Six four D. It reads, along with my editing, with the Balboa's editing. But on the one hand, O oh Socrates, this could never be. That is, if you think that this is in any way a necessary inference from my previous admissions. For, for I would rather withdraw some of them and not be ashamed to say that my statements were wrong. But now there comes the interesting part. I would rather withdraw some of my statements than to concede at any time 
that someone who is ignorant of the self can be called sound mindful. <laughs> Wait a minute, what is he doing now? Mm. He's saying you can't have that virtue until, if you don't. That virtue you know comes self. from knowing the self. Knowing the self. <laughs> For I would almost say that this self is sound mindfulness. And I am at one with him who set up the description, the inscription at Delphi. For the intent of that inscription on the temple, as it appears to me, is to serve as a salutary welcoming phrase to those who enter it. So that instead of welcoming, for this is the wrong form of greeting, they should rather exhort one another with the words, be, sign, be sound mindfulness. And thus the God bids those who enter his temple in a way which differs from that of men. Such, I believe, was the intent of the dedicator of these inscriptions in setting it up. And also, that he who says in reality to each person who enters be of sound mindfulness but he says it in an enigmatic way as a priest or a prophet would for know thyself and be sound mindfulness is the same here's the sound mindfulness right so one of the major virtues that are developed by some man, sound mindfulness, it's the same as know thyself. Interesting? Yes. So look here. Maybe there's a basic and fundamental problem that we need to look at, and that is, of all, the, of all the ways you might want to explain to someone what you mean by the self, huh? is it possible that you could distinguish this idea of the self from its various forms? Itself, myself, herself, themselves, it's right. Could you then separate them out so that you can now distinguish them? Because would any of those fit know thy self honorific? It's even spelt differently. Right? Needs a sigma in front of it. So even if you do this, you would then have to go back, would you not? And have to say, now given that, I should now be able to talk about the difference in the use of know thyself. And essentially, in what kind of experience might you point to as the kind that would give you an insight or a knowledge of this thing so that you can answer the question, what is, after all, the self? And how does it differ from thyself? And how can you gain one and not bother with the other? Now, two people did some nice work on this. And thank you very much for that quote. It's beautiful. And the other person is Regina. She caught this and passed it around. And so I asked her to make copies of this quote so we could play with it tonight. So I say, uh, shouldn't we uh, say hello to both of them for their uh, high honor? Can I say something? Please. Um, comparing this with what you just said and adding thyself, isn't that rather a compliment to the person entering the temple, it could just say, know the self. But really what it's saying is, hey you, enjoy or come to, come to greet your own self. Mm -hmm. 
for yourself. Oh, you dropped out your own. Your own self for your own self? No. Do we have our own self? Well. Yes, maybe. It would be worthy to ask in that regard. Damn right. And that's where we're going tomorrow. All right, this is where the dialogue that I put together, it hasn't been finished, there are a couple of errors in it, but I wanted to get out so we could then explore it. So what do you think? Now, wouldn't you agree, the ideal thing to do is always call on someone who comes in late because they're relaxed and they're not busy, and we can call on them for these kinds of questions, can we not? Would it be fair? <laughs> Who came in recently then? Who was her? Oh, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> oh. All we want to know is, can you come up with a, a, a way of talking about the difference between thyself and the self? Thyself and the self is the same absolute thing. It's the same? Absolutely the same. Well, then they're being redundant and making up a new spelling for the word that's the same. about perspective that confuses the issue. It's all one. <laughs> <laughs> you all know Eric. He's a, a great guy, a lot of fun. He's also a, a chiropractor and has worked on my back. And uh, he's changed subtly. Now he's working on my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is where we're going tomorrow. I thought I'd use this as a way of introducing for the, the fun tomorrow. How about some questions and where you want to explore it? I'll be, go ahead, you're first. Steve, go ahead. You look very energetic. I'm wondering, and, yeah, I'm wondering uh, go ahead. about the experience uh, that you're alluding to. Yeah, and yeah. The exploration of that. Yeah, go ahead. And what, uh, what, what that may reveal and in what way what we, we may uh, in, in, uh, in, encounter it or engage with it. What is the process? Is it this? Or is it... Uh, well, does it look like it fits? The separation of the soul from the body and the fail? Yes. And if that is called the experience of wisdom, does wisdom end up being called the knowledge of the self? Uh-oh, therefore, how would you conclude? Uh, therefore, you know, that uh, separating the body from the self and encountering, you know, it's like uh, yourself. See, but, it, but he didn't say thyself, no, this is true. therefore he goofed. But from the quote we got from the Balboas on sound mindfulness, that's a very clear connection with the Delphic Oracle thyself. Okay. So given that, how would you push it? Well, then therefore, uh, uh, you know, we have to defer to Juan to, uh, to uh, make a conclusion here, or not. Go ahead, it's all right. Do you want to call on him? I think we should. All right, go ahead. He's calling on help. Yeah. <laughs> David? Well, I finally came up with a translation. Yes, please. Um, but I must preface it, as usual, by saying that um, I have to take some liberties. Let's do it. Which, um, first I must say, there's no reason to think that the people who translated this already haven't taken their own damn liberties. So I can go ahead and take mine if I, if I choose. <laughs> Does someone loving a phronesis in being especially take hope to find this self in no other place worthily of account for it than in Hades? Hmm. Do it again, slowly. Do it please. again? Come on. Beautiful. And I really have to, you know, want, want, excuse me, this is like over the top. Does someone loving a 
phronesis in being, uh, understanding in being, hyphenated, especially take hope to find this self in no other place worthily of account for it, worthy of account for it, but then in Hades, which kind of fits the context yeah, that he's yeah, in right now. Yeah. Which, which can be experienced upon death. Yeah. The self and phronesis in being and the, uh, accountability and the dog next door named Hades. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but <Like, laughs> Regina? Uh, oh. You enjoyed it. You oh, yes. laughed. So I thought maybe you'd share the letter. Oh. There was a. No, I just. There was a, a laughing acknowledgement, certainly. No. Okay. I was thinking of something else. I oh. was thinking actually of the idea of thyself. And it occurs to me that in the book two, he describes the nature of God, and, and it's a certain law that you have to have about God. But if we are supposed to be as close to the divine as possible, then in some way that description of God would be what the philosopher in himself would be. That is, he wouldn't be deceiving, he would be always... Um, <coughs> he, wouldn't, he wouldn't change himself, he'd always be himself, himself, <coughs> knowing himself. I don't know all the three now, so... That's okay. But, but if you could point to... Uh, you must have your, your finger on a good quote in book two. Do you not? Right. Yes. Um, uh, well, I did. Um, uh, uh, is not a god good in reality? Ah, so the self would that's be a good, good. one. And the fable must agree with that. Again, nothing good is harmful, and can what does not harm. And uh, again, and very good, the good is serviceable, the cause of well-being. So knowing the self would be that. And then the good is ca is cause not of all things, but of those that are well, and no cause of those that are evil. It follows then that God, since He is good would not be cause of all things, as most say, but cause of a few things. And, and uh, let's see, uh, God is, uh, where is he? He's not, uh, oh, or is he simple and never leaves his own form at all? So that would be, if, you're, if in book six, he's uh, at the beginning, he says, hold it, hold it, I got it. Uh, he says that, uh, why the next thing, since philosophers alone are able to lay hold of the ever same and unchangeable, and those who cannot do so but keep wandering. So that's one characteristic, that is that he's simple and never leaves his own form. And then um, he's not deceitful either. He, does, he, he, he doesn't have that lie in his soul. Now the point is, can you link that with the idea of self rather than from an inference? Oh, uh, well only that the, when we talk about the philosopher in book six, he's talking about since philosophers alone are able to lay hold of the ever same and unchangeable, that's one. <coughs> and uh, and, and who are in truth deprived of knowledge of what truly each thing is. And I'm taking that to be self, but I don't, I'm not going to go any further. Cause I'm that's okay. <laughs> okay. No, yeah. see, that's where you might want to look at the grid. Yeah. Why? Well, to see if Because it may be right there. Yeah. Okay. But it seems to idea of self saying. Yes, it does. Yeah, go ahead. That's all. Well, that's not good enough. Right. You're suggesting 
that the invariability of it is a sameness and that's attributed to the idea of self in terms of the language itself since the word self and same in the Greek is interchangeable. Right. Right, and God was described as not changing its, his form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that you, you want to try to be as close to the divine as possible, no. or like the divine. Can I trouble you for the uh, Slavonis number, the one you just read? That's by the great lie. Uh, 178 is the page, and it's about yeah. 388 B, C, D, E, F, G. Thank you. Okay. So I'm calling it quits so you can go home and get a good snooze and come in tomorrow and have some fun in the seminar. Okay? Any other questions before we blow the whistle? What Sir? Time, what time do we start? Time. I don't eight. know. Oh, that's breakfast. Breakfast at 8. And okay. We start at 9. Right? 9. Okay. And there'll be breakfast here for those who want to come early? Good. Okay? Thank you guys. Hold it. Define this cell. This cell. No other place for the Hold on to whatever cash you get. I'm directing. I have this. Oh my God.